12th Street. Uh, that, that's the subset. It's 12th Street, and I'm from Exotic Family City Crib. Okay. Uh, we're part of the SEA, Southeast Asians, Sui's, Exotic Family, Asian Boys. So where are we going to go first? Where, where you we're going to go to my childhood home, and I'm going to just give y'all some stories, a little, you know, just bring y'all through. We'll talk about just how I grew up, little things here and there, so y'all get an understanding of uh, life on the east side in Cambodia town back then how it was yeah all right let's go all right let's go come on all right i've been rapping for years but honestly i never made my mind up to commit to it really commit to it until about two and a half three years ago um i was out of state for a bit and I had a lot of time to think to myself. I kind of left everything. I, I I left my family. I left the hood. Um, I left music. I wasn't doing no music. I wasn't putting out no music. I was still writing to myself. I was reading a lot of books, um, trying to absorb as much knowledge as I can, and just trying to gain a more broad understanding of the world and life in general. <coughs> and um, I was trying to see, you know, what what was the right path for me. And um, it ultimately came down to music. I felt like if I was to give my life to something, if I was to die doing something, it would be music. Um, I think music in general, it's not about bars. Um, music is something, as long as it connects, as long as it moves you, it's music. You could be singing the ABC song. <laughs> that ain't no lyrics, that's all letters that they singing, but you hear that tune, you hear that melody, and then at the same time, it's rhyming, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you hear that, I think that humans are un uh, unconsciously um, wired to pay attention to rhythms and patterns. And when we hear something, like when we hear music, we automatically, if it connects with us, if we like the way it sounds, we, we chime in, you know, it grabs our attention. And I think that's what music is. It doesn't have to be lyrical. Um, I just prefer to be lyrical because that's what I grew up on and I, I value that because um, a lot of the things that I learned was from music, like listening to Tupac, Jay-Z, it, it really guided me because I didn't have like my older elders, my elders they didn't have much game to teach me because it was only so much, you know, their world was so small. So music, hip hop in general. Um, taught me the most when I was a kid. It taught me things that my, my older, my elders could not say to me, because some of them just don't know how to express themselves, you know, and yeah, so that's why that's why I love doing lyrical stuff and saying something that actually means something that can stick with a person. Now, since, since I've met you five years ago, the music scene has really blew up for Long Beach artists. For sure. I mean, we could probably name at least a half a dozen guys that we didn't even know five years ago they were all doing it from like Jabba Lok and and uh, Sabi the Third to, Third. to uh, Vince Staples, um, Stupid Young, Stupid Young is definitely doing this thing. So what's your whole uh, reaction to the, the, this movement, this Long Beach movement? I love it. I love it. Um, I think it's coming together, especially seeing Stupid Young fuck with you know everybody else, Savvy Third, he, and he's doing music with P Nice and all of that. I love it. I think it's been missing, um, you know, because back then Snoop Dogg and Trey D, Daz, Nate Dogg, they all held it down, and it made me proud. I remember listening to all, all the Long Beach music, and it made me proud just bumping that. We bumped that through summers on every block, and it made us real proud uh, of our city. So um, I think that's what it's coming to now is that this new generation is going to carry the torch for, for the city. Cambodia Town, or Long Beach, it's actually the Cambodian capital in America. We got the most Cambodians here in Long Beach. Outside um, of Cambodia? Outside of Cambodia. And um, I'm not sure when it happened, but I know that we were real proud when it did happen. And it took it took some community leaders to do that, you know, to, to, to make all of that happen. And I recognize that. So hopefully the newer generations coming up, they recognize that somebody had to be out there pushing for that. Yeah. Um, even all of these things like little parades here and there, the little signs that says Cambodia Town, it's, 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 uh, 
it's something we should be proud of coming from uh, where we're from because we weren't nothing. You know, we was just a small, small group of people when we came. And, um, you know, who knows how far it could go if we just keep pushing. As an Asian, Asians are always represented like in low numbers in media, in entertainment, and even in rap. It, For sure. it ain't really been a whole lot of Asians, but it, shoot, I've met a bunch of Asian spitters over the years. Yeah. Um, there must be something going on to where people just don't want to open the door to, to Asians and, and hip hop. Or, or what's your take on that? I honestly feel like we haven't hit hard enough. I feel like when we hit hard enough, it's gonna hit, you know? Um, there's no stopping it. There's not gonna be no stopping it. It don't matter what race you are. I mean, you seen Eminem do it. That was probably the hardest barrier ever. Um, and he hit hard, you know? And I feel like when it's that time, it's gonna happen. So um, I, th I just think it just wasn't time yet, honestly. So this is Warren and 14th. Warren and 15th, between 14th and 15th. This is my childhood home. Um, right here. First moved in here, I believe I was seven. I believe I was about a seven years old, seven to eight years old. Used to be a lot going on in here. My big brother, he was some Asian boys. Um, so you know, this was like the hub, this was like one of the hubs. How did how do uh, brothers end up claiming two different neighborhoods? So my brother, he was a wise brother. He was uh, very protective. He was always on my head. Um, he kind of did get me involved with the lifestyle in, in a kind of way. Um, he took me to go do my first burglary when I was nine. Um, he, he forced me to smoke some cigarettes at like five, six years old, you know what I mean? But that's when he was older. I mean, that's when he was younger. So I can't blame him for that. And, and that's probably what, that's probably how he was raised growing up in our environment. So I can't blame him for that. But as he got older, he started to wisen up and um, when it was time for me to, to, when I wanted to get put on, he didn't want me to get put on Asian boys because he knew what came with this lifestyle. So when word was going around, they said, um, your little brother won't get put on. He told the homies, he said, no, don't put him on. If, if he want to um, if he wanna gangbang, he got he to gotta choose his own path. I don't want him to be under me because I don't want him to feel like, you know, like he's responsible. So naturally, I ended up, um, I was, I was actually raised in a church when I was younger because of my brother. He was getting out of hand with my parents and they, they couldn't handle him no more. And um, they sent him off to a group home. And that church, that same church, they used to take all these troubled Cambodian youths and just try to teach them something different, T try to take them outside the hood because a lot of us had no guidance. And our parents was uneducated, they was poor, uh, so we was handicapped, straight up, as, as, as youth. We don't have no guidance. Our parents don't have nothing. Uh, they didn't trust the government, you know. We were stuck. So this church, they was taking troubled youth and they was trying to, you know, uh, do something that benefits them and, and teach them, I guess, a different way of life. Um, so I grew up in that. I grew up in a church around a bunch of other gang members. Um, yeah, so basically, he, he didn't want, he didn't want, he didn't want none of this for me. He know what it come with. Um, at the time, I was still young. I was naive, like a lot of, a lot of the youth that's getting put on. They don't, they, they don't see 20, 30 years down the line. And he, he knew, he knew what was going on, so he didn't want me to get put on. I ended up getting put on because I went to church with, uh, one of the big homies, little brothers, and we became real close. So I ended up getting put on. I actually got put on 12th Street first. I got put on 12th Street because my brother-in-law was from 12th Street. 12th Street is a clique. It's a subset of the SCA. I got put on 12th Street. That same day, I actually got jumped by some West Side Longos on the West Side because I was going to school at Cabrillo Reed. So I got jumped twice in one day. I got jumped on the West Side and then the school safety came pick me up. They, the police came and they all broke off running. And I told them to drop me off at uh, La Loon. La Loon was a, a restaurant back then. It was on New York and uh, Atlantic behind 
Polly Burger. Polly Burger used to be Tommy's. And then I ended up getting put on 12th Street behind La Luna. So I got jumped twice that day and I started banging 12th Street. And then naturally, I wanted to join a bigger hood. And it, it, it just naturally happened to fall into the exotic family. Yeah, just because of uh, who, who I was associated with at that time. And when you when you got when you joined Exotic Family, it was already called Exotic Family. It was already called Exotic Family. Um, before that, it was called Exotic Foreign Creation Coterie. And what does that last word mean? Coterie is a a, a group of people with the same idea, like 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 say me and you, like exotic. You know, obviously exotic foreign. We're we're we're, we're something different. Creation. You know what I'm saying? This is. This is this group that we created, and it's and coterie is a group of people, and we all have that same mentality, the same idea. We focus on one goal, is to, you know, whatever that goal is. You feel me? That meaning behind it is actually pretty deep. Yeah. It's just a long name to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then it changed to what? Exotic your... family, city crib. Who? How many people lived in this house when you were living in here? Who, who I lived was in here with you? Here. It was me, my dad, my mom, my older brother. Two sisters, um, me and my little brother. It was real small. It's a, uh, it's like a two bedroom in there. It was a bunch of roaches and rats. Um, yeah, like big ass rats. It was gutter. The manager sometimes he wouldn't even fix it for us. Um, it was real grimy. But I had this garage and I decked out that garage. I would bring the homies in there. I'll bring some girls in there. Um, drink, we hang out, do tattoos, do all kind of stuff. There was a lot of gang activity going on before me. My brother, he used to bring all the homies over. You would see this whole thing packed. This whole thing packed in this alley. Just looking at the gates, you could tell, like, it don't look safe, you know, in this territory. You could just come and something could happen right through this gate. Like, somebody could shoot right through this gate. Um, so we always had to be cautious. Like, one time, my brother, every time he would fix the car, he would have somebody watch over him. When his homies wasn't around, he would have me hold a big ass rifle at like eight years old. Eight years old, holding a rifle with a towel over it, watching him while he's fixing the car. Um, at the same time, he was on drugs, so he was real paranoid, but his nature alone, everything that he's been through, he's just very cautious. He's very, uh, he just, he tries to think what the other person would do because he's been through a lot he's been shot he's been stabbed and he's seen it all and um yeah that, that's what that's what that kind of environment does to you what's the age difference between you and your older brother and what kind of influence did he have when he was young i think he's about eight years older than me uh he had a lot of influence on me i wasn't close with my dad even though my dad lived with me he was close to my pops my pops was a compulsive gambler uh, he was an alcoholic at one point. Uh, by the time I got older, he was going through a lot of depression, probably from losing a lot of money and being broke, being uneducated, you know, not feeling like he was trapped. On top of that, he got five kids that he couldn't really take care of. So um, he couldn't guide me. There was not much he could tell me, and I, I was missing that guidance. And um, I looked up to my brother, but my brother, at the same time, when he was younger, he was on my head a lot. He was like pressing me, you know. Um, he he started learning how to be a better brother. Um, and when it came time for me to gangbang and stuff, he left. And he he was trying to change his life because he'd been through so much. When by the time I came into that life, and he came back down here. And I was bringing all of that drama to the house. He wasn't having it, you know. He wasn't. He wasn't feeling it. And I kind of resented him for that because he went through it. And at the same time, he kind of had a small hand in, in, in bringing me into that lifestyle, you know, just because of what when he brought me around and what he taught me, how he uh, raised me, you know, putting guns in my hands and there was shotguns under my bed. Um, yeah, just stuff like that. So you can you can imagine any kid that's gonna grow up in that kind of environment, you think they're gonna turn out to be some angel? It's not gonna happen. So that's why I, that's why I wanted to talk about my childhood here, so that people could get an understanding of how things like this happen.
Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.